This time on Poll Hub, a brand new poll of New York State voters, and we're talking about New York State and New York City, some interesting results, especially if your name is Eric Adams. We'll get to that. And then a short show because it is a short week for us and for many people, Thanksgiving's coming. What is your favorite food or drink? What's the thing you most look forward to on Turkey Day? It's a dead giveaway. We will get to that. Stick around, let's get to it. And hi everybody, welcome to Poll Hub. I'm J.D. Dapper. I'm Mary Griffith. And I am Lee Mernkopf. We are in the Thanksgiving week, so we are giving you the show early so that you can listen to it before you sit down and fall asleep after a long turkey dinner with the L tryptophan and all of that. But we first want to talk about our new poll that we've done just out. New York State and New York City are the questions, although we polled everybody in New York State about this. Um, Lee, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the state government or do you want to start with Eric Adams down in, in New York City? Well, I, why don't we start with the state government, because that was where our sample was the larger, and I think that's a good place to begin. And one of the things that we saw was that the governor's numbers, well, I might say nobody's doing too well of all the people we asked uh, in this particular poll. So uh, we're dealing with a kind of like a grumpy electorate and her approval rating at 41% and disapproval at 42 And what's interesting is her strongly disapproved exceeds her strongly approve, not by two to one, but close to two to one. And I think it's being driven by the fact that people almost six in 10 think the quality of life has deteriorated and she's not getting any points for changing Albany for the better, which is always kind of like the bottom line in a governor. Are they making an impact on that? So that was the governor's situation. We also asked about statewide the two U.S. senators and Chuck Schumer at the highest, at 48% that he's been since uh, September of 16. So uh, he's doing decently, I guess. So not everybody's deteriorating. Senator Gillibrand, who is up for re-election in this coming November, a one-year away, at a 40% approval rating. Nothing to write home about. 55% disapproval. I don't know if that's going to attract any Republicans in the mix. And, And the last one we did ask about was President Biden whose numbers in New York reflect his general deterioration everywhere, although New York not so bad at 44% because New York has a lot more uh, Democrats. So that's sort of the statewide picture. Uh, what is Mary J., what do you make of all this statewide stuff? One thing that stood out to me about the Schumer number and about the numbers in general, but I think the Schumer number is telling, if you look at his trend over a long period of time, and we've been asking questions about him for a long time because he's been a senator for a long time. The first time we asked questions was in 1999. I mean, was he senator then or is he still a congressman? I think that was when he first won for first senate. Anyway, yeah. yeah. So we've been asking for a really long time. And what struck me here was, yeah, his excellent and good is 48%. That's pretty high. His poor is the highest it's ever been. It's 31%, and it's been climbing since June of 2017. What happened in 2017? What happened that might have turned the corner where his poor numbers would start (laughs) climbing into the 20s and 30s? I think we're seeing, even with the Chuck Schumer, who prior to Donald Trump being elected and MAGA taking over the Republican Party, Republicans in New York would be like, Schumer, sure, he's doing a pretty good job. I don't love him, but he's doing a pretty good job. And now it's almost a third of the electorate say he's doing a poor job. That third, I think, is we're now identifying, we can now identify a third of the New York state electorate who are going to say that they're basically Republicans or Trump Republicans, and that no matter what a Democrat does or says, they're not going to like it. And no matter what a Republican says or do, they are going to like it. And I think nationally, it's a higher number, but I think it's about a third in New York. And I think that's a telling sign on a Chuck Schumer to see that. I don't know, Mary, am I making too much of that? I don't think you're making too much of it, Jay. And I think that we also want to take a moment before we move on to the city to take a look at and to talk a little bit about the uh, congressional generic in New York Mm -hmm. State. Lee, I know this is a question that jumped out to you. You know, we mentioned President Biden in terms of his approval rating here in New York State. What are we seeing in terms of the congressional generic uh, in New York State? Yeah, and this is, just, you know, obviously there's lots and lots of congressional districts. So the generic is sort of a general propensity to go Democratic or Republican for Congress, sort of a bellwether measurement. Again, we're talking about a very Democratic state, very blue state. Democrats right now getting the intentions of 49% of the, of the statewide electorate, 36% 
saying they will likely vote for a Republican for Congress. That's a 13% difference for in favor of the Democrat, not as big as the statewide registration margin is, but a healthy number until uh, we got into the New York City suburbs and we asked about the Hudson Valley and looked at that separately from the rest of the state, sort of lumped it in. These are where a lot of the competitive swing districts are. New York is going to get a lot of attention next fall because of the fact that there's a lot of swing districts and that's going to attract a crowd, lots of coverage. And right now, the Democrats on the congressional ballot question in that region are at 45%, the Republicans at 40%. So instead of a difference of 13%, the advantage to the Democrats is only 5%, which is better than being behind, but it certainly suggests that there's a lot of work to be done for the Democrats. The Republicans, you know, are, although the minor party in New York, you know, are scoring some numbers on lots of these questions. And, you know, the even with the elected officials uh, statewide, they're running into a higher strongly disapproves and strongly approves. And to uh, the point you guys were making about Ch- uh, Senator Schumer, obviously he's the number one Democrat in the Senate. So he now attracts the ire of Republicans in a partisan way, where if he was just the senior senator from New York, it probably wouldn't make eh, quite as big difference. It's although sort of under, although under Gillibrand, yeah, Gillibrand has, has increasingly high disapprovals too. So yeah. that's why I, I think I think it's more than just that he is the face of the Democrats in the Senate, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, so, um, and then we turn to, I believe, New York City. Some of the uh, most interesting data that we found in the survey has to do with New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Um, the FBI is investigating his 2021 campaign and allegations that his camp and that he um, engaged in wrongdoings um, with Turkey during that time period. And what we found is that most New York City adults, uh, more than 72%, think that uh, Adams did do something wrong. say he did something illegal. 39% believe he did something unethical, but not illegal. And his approval rating is taking a hit. Adam's approval rating is now at 37% approve, 54% disapprove. And back in March of 2022, his approval rating was at 61% and his disapproval was at 24%. That's a pretty big change. Lee, why don't you jump in here? Uh, Yeah. And he's roughly at the midpoint of his time in office. And and what I... (laughs) What I was struck by is the level of concern voters have in New York City about this whole ethical Turkey event because, I mean, I don't know to the degree that he's been implicated other than the fact I think his campaign manager has been sort of the target, and I know they took some of his recording devices and communication well, so, devices. So, Lee, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Okay. The FBI came to his city-issued suburban, armored suburban, and asked his police detail to step aside. And the FBI joined him in the back seat and asked for his phones. So I think, you know, I, who knows where that's going? But it's a little bit more than just one or two of his aides' houses have been raided but, or campaign people. But, I but think, who, who yeah. in our audience hasn't had that happen to them? Uh, I, I would say probably most of our audience who are wonderful, upstanding, law-abiding citizens, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, so look, look, this is a story. One of the reasons we ask this question is to get a benchmark, because if trouble is around the corner in a bigger way, we want to know where he was at this point so that we can see you know, how much deterioration there might be based on his dealings with Turkey. Yeah, I do. Uh, but Lee, I do think I, it's two years out, but I do think it's worth pointing out that Eric Adams's base, there's, there were a lot of progressives, like lots of progressives hate Eric Adams, wanted somebody else. Right. And it, we're talking yeah. about a democratic city. So we're just talking about Democrats because the, the proponents are Democrats. But I do think it's really important to note that his base of support is Southeast Queens and Central Brooklyn, largely black voters, many of the middle class, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, homeowners, that kind of stuff, working for the city or working in other kinds of jobs. That is his base of support. And if you look at our numbers, I know it's a small subset, so we don't want to put put too much weight into this. The, The error margins go up pretty significantly. But if you look at his strongly disapproved number among black adults in New York, that's at 28% and 10% disapprove. That's 38%. That's nearly four in 10 black New Yorkers, New York City residents saying that they disapprove of the job that he's doing. I think that's one to watch. I think that's yeah. significant. And if there is more 
legal trouble that comes yeah. closer to him. I think that he has, he's got a fighter on his hands two years from now. But again, it's two years from now. And I think Eric Adams' troubles with Turkey could be really an issue, but we'll have to see what happens with Turkey. Funny you should mention Turkey, uh, because the fun fact this week has to do with your... Athen really enjoy. Athen's going to join us in a moment. Our super student. She actually liked that segue. Did you not see that coming? Did you? Did we surprise you? Well, it was the perfect segue. Nothing could have topped that. <laughs> yeah. I think we all saw it coming. We all. Yeah, saw it yeah, coming. I know. It's it's like in my class. Uh, you know, that's why I'm uh, corny. Uh, corny was not a, 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 a issued as a favorite food, however. But we did ask, we didn't ask, it was asked by CBS in 2013, the question of what your favorite food for the holiday table is. And surprise, surprise, turkey at 57%, stuffing a big 18, not for me, vegetables, not quite buying that at 12, cranberries, a little lower than I thought, and alcohol at 5%, which I think may have been a little surprised. I know that not everybody has turkey on Thanksgiving. We've seen that in prior polls, uh, which I do find kind of interesting. But what uh, what is your reaction to this? Anybody, are you surprised that turkey is not only in front, but not by a huge number? Let's go to Athen, who's currently in the state of Maine. So what's your favorite food for Thanksgiving? Well, I actually don't eat turkey um, because I'm a vegetarian. So I would have to say stuffing. A good box of like stovetop stuffing. That would be that would be my top favorite. Now, what now, are you guys you... having for Thanksgiving dinner? Um, well, my family makes like a turkey or a ham. That's what we usually eat. But um, yeah, I usually go for the sides. I take all the sides. You would be very popular among the let's pardon the turkey movement, uh, which the president, of course, does every year. You, you, could, you could join that club. Mary, what is happening in, in the Griffith household? Well, we, we have a traditional uh, turkey uh, dinner with my extended family. I, have, I actually have a lot to say on this topic because when I was a kid, I actually liked the turkey skin, the greasy, crisp turkey skin. But as I've gotten older... And I realized how bad that actually is for me. I've moved away from it. But I'm with Athen. I love stuffing with some gravy. I also love cranberries, but you're probably going to be surprised and will shake your head at me. I like the canned cranberry more than anything else rather than the fresh cranberries. Wow. So, yeah, anyway. is, yeah but, it, but it's not all that. I, I suspect if I had done the turkey skin with, when I was growing up, it would count for my high cholesterol. But <laughs> So, Jay, uh, what, what are you going for this so, uh, year? Mary, what? eat turkey skin. Get, rejoin the turkey skin club. It's good for you. Don't tell, let anybody tell you it's bad for you. It's delicious. That's the best part of the it turkey. It is delicious. It really is. Yeah. Um, I'm more of a stuffing person. Turkey's fine. I don't love turkey. I don't dislike it. It's fine. But I like stuffings, especially all different types, you know, coin bread stuffing or oyster uh. stuffing or this or that new thing. I like stuffing. Um, but I do have a question. White meat or dark meat? And Athen, you uh. can participate. Lee, white uh, meat or dark uh, meat? Well, definitely white meat. And I am, as uh, some of you know, what's called a segment sequential component eater. What that means is I eat only one item at a time. So I would eat, let's say, the turkey, then the mashed potatoes. Then the cranberries. In other words, I do not mix up. I find that to be a very difficult decision making as as you're eating. But that that is where I am. If Barbara was here today, she would say that her favorite food for Thanksgiving is reservations. So, Mary, white meat or dark meat? White meat, definitely. Not well, we should have Thanksgiving together because uh, we would not have any conflicts. Unlike the famous crazy uncle who has gotten such a bad rap. Uh, for Thanksgiving, but uh, a lot of people probably avoid politics uh, at the table, given the polarization that exists, unless your family is of one side or the other. Given the direction this conversation is going, I think we should just say Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> this is a Thanksgiving song. I hope you enjoy it. Love to eat turkey. <laughs> That'll do it for Poll Hub this week. Poll Hub is produced by the Marist Poll at Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York. Mary Griffith is our executive producer. Casey Shah is our production supervisor. The Poll Hub team includes Athen Hollis, Hannah Tone, and Rebecca Hendricks. If you enjoy Poll Hub, please consider leaving a review. Positive reviews help other listeners like you find us. If you'd like to learn more about polling and survey science, check out the Marist Poll Academy. 
our free online learning portal. If you have questions for us, tweet them at us at Maris Poll. Remember, you can always tell your smart speaker to play Poll Hub. And with any luck, it'll cooperate. Finally, wherever you listen to Poll Hub, there is a subscribe button. Click it and the latest episode will be ready for you and your podcasting app as soon as it's released. We'll, we'll see, see you next time. Turkey lurkey do and turkey lurkey dap. I eat that turkey, then I take a nap. <laughs>